Hey, what's up everybody? It's Joe with J Blake Photo. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the kind of pre-announcement, post-leak. Uh, these are really kind of the most heavily leaked details uh, in drone history. Uh, the announcement is later today, this morning, uh, but we're gonna be talking about the new DJI Air 2S, formerly the Mavic Air 2 uh, S variant. Now they've dropped the Mavic name. It's just Air 2. Yes. Okay. Before we get into the video, I just want to say thank you, number one, to everyone who watched my most recent video on the Canon EOS R3. Uh, just so you know, there were some details that just came out about that camera, literally within hours of me submitting that video uploading it to YouTube. So some new details there. I'll be talking about that in a future video. But if you're into stuff like that, talking about new gear and equipment in photography, videography, cinematography, uh, gadgets, drone flight, all that sort of thing, uh, that is what I'm into as well as adventuring and taking this gear out into the wild and doing super fun stuff with it. If that's something that you're interested in, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're interested in these kind of technical videos where we dig into the specs and the differences between products and brands, go ahead and hit subscribe, go ahead and hit the like button on this video. And if you're into stills photography, I normally post some of the best shots from my adventures on my Instagram, which is over at jblake.photo over on Instagram. Here's a couple shots that I recently shot over in Zion National Park. I will be in a number of other national parks and wilderness areas uh, in the Western United States throughout the rest of the summer. And then at the end of the summer, I will be heading out to Maui again, my third time to Maui. I'm very excited to be heading out there. My wife and I both, both vaccinated, ready to travel and have some fun adventures. Thanks for sticking through that. Now let's talk about this drone. The first thing to talk about is the name. So, when DJI first started coming out with the Mavic series, you had the Mavic Pro, uh, then they released the Mavic Air, then the Mavic Air 2, and the Mavic 2 Pro, Mavic 2 Zoom. So the name has had some, you know, some interesting things uh, going on with it. Plus, of course, you had the Phantom and you had the Spark. Um, I have had Airs, I've had the Spark, I've had two different Mavic Pros. Uh, and right now my drone of choice is the Mavic 2 Pro with the one inch Hasselblad sensor. You'll notice a lot of similarities as we talk about the drone that is being announced today in relation to this drone. And so I'm gonna be doing a lot of comparisons uh, to this drone that I have. So with the name, number one, they're dropping the Mavic name and really pushing the branding to that Air name. So my anticipation is that not unlike with the Phantom and the Mavic, we'll now have the Air and that will be uh, kind of its, its own thing. Maybe we'll also just see the DJI Mini instead of the Mavic Mini uh, soon. Um, but with the Mavic 2, both the Pro and the Zoom, uh, and the Air, they kept that Mavic name so now we're basically down to the Air and the Mavic. The other interesting thing about the name is that it's not just, it's not the three, it's the two S. And I wanna talk about why that's important after we get through the specs. But I know that that's probably what everyone wants to talk about. So let's go through the specs. We've got them all, starting with the sensor. So unlike the Mavic 2 uh, or Mavic Air 2, Mavic 2 Air, Mavic Air 2, uh, unlike the Mavic Air 2 with its 48 megapixel sensor and 4K, 8K recording uh, and just super high resolution stills, this actually drops it down to 20 megapixels. So you don't have the same resolution there and it is a fixed zoom range. So unlike say the Mavic 2 zoom or Mavic 2 Unlike the Mavic 2 Zoom, where you had that zoom range, uh, this camera will be a fixed focal length uh, at 24 millimeters, but it is packing uh, a one inch sensor. There's no specific mention of the Hasselblad branding. I know that DJI 
you know, they invested in Hasselblad. They did a considerable amount of branding on the Mavic 2 Pro with the Hasselblad branded sensor. So I don't know if that's gonna be going away or if that's just not something that they're going to be using as a brand on the Air series and only on the Mavic series. So maybe if we see a Mavic 3 Pro, maybe it'll continue to utilize the Hasselblad branding. But a 20 megapixel, one inch sensor on this drone. Continuing on the resolution side of things, in addition to 20 megapixel stills, we're gonna have 5.4, 5.4K video recording up to 30 frames per second, in addition to the 4K uh, and standard modes that we have on the other Mavics. Now on the Mavic 2 Pro, you actually have the 4K HQ mode, uh, which takes um, you know, just that portion of the sensor that is the 4K section, and then the non-HQ, which is the full sensor, uh, bin down or compressed down. So effectively, you're getting this whole sensor now without smashing those pixels together down into 4K. They're leaving it at 5.4K and recording it directly to the card. So you're gonna get more uh, crispness, more quality, and probably more opportunities to zoom. With that, there is an eight by digital zoom option uh, on this camera, though not an optical zoom like in the Mavic 2 zoom. Still on the sensor, uh, this will be a fixed aperture uh, sensor, whereas again, on the Mavic 2 Pro, I have a variable aperture option where I can go from 2.8 uh, all the way down to, I think, F11, um, though I don't normally get down that far to prevent diffraction, it does get a little mushy. Uh, but I really like this because if I don't launch this with an ND filter, maybe it's around sunset, I don't think I'm going to need it. I get up in the air and I find I'm just a little overexposed. It's nice to be able to bring that down just a little bit at the same time to open it up to let more light in. So I like the option there. That's really nice on the Pro. Not available in the new 2S model, even though it does carry the same 20 megapixel sensor. So when I saw these leaks, the first information that I wanted to know, the first bit of detail that I wanted to know was, well, okay, it's a 20 megapixel, one inch sensor like I have on my two pro, but can it do 10 bit log? That was really the main thing. And guess what? It will. So this camera will be doing full 10 bit uh, with D log, uh, meaning you get that flat profile with all that color depth, which gives you maximum versatility in post-processing. Uh, we don't know yet what the bit rates are gonna be in comparison, but knowing DJI, because they have no problem cannibalizing their own products, it's probably gonna be the same as the Pro, if not higher uh, in terms of the bit rate. So effectively, other than the uh, adjustable aperture that you have on the Pro 2, this camera is effectively the same uh, as what we're going to be getting out of the Pro 2 uh, if you had bought it uh, a couple of years ago. Moving away from the sensor and the camera itself, we talked just a little bit about some of the features of the camera of the drone. It's going to have an improved HDR and intelligent HDR function uh, for video and stills, as well as panorama and improved hyperlapse functionality. Not a surprise there. It comes with the now kind of standard eight gigabytes of storage that, uh, oh no, I forgot my card storage. So when you're up in the air and you get that great shot, and you realize I forgot to put a card in my drone, uh, which has happened to me, you have that at least eight gig to do something. Some of the standard features that we come to know and love out of DJI drones has been improved. For example, spotlight and point of interest have been improved. Active track has been improved with a new Active Track 4.0. The drone is now compatible with the newer version of OcuSync, OcuSync 3.0. Now, one of the things that I love about my Pro is that I was able to buy it with the uh, smart controller. I love this thing. I am so, uh, I'm so happy that I don't have to fiddle around with a phone or with a tablet or anything like that. I can just, I can just turn this thing on and it just, it just works every time. No problem, no issues, no cables. Um, you know, no cables fraying, no connections breaking, no issues with clamping. It just, it just works, and I love this controller. It is OcuSync 2.0, and no word on if this would become available uh, in an OcuSync 3.0 or if it would even be compatible. It has not yet been compatible with the other OcuSync 2 drones, unless I missed some announcement. But if you know, let me know down in the comments because that would be interesting. Um, 
So we'll see if that's something that they incorporate, but probably not since it's not gonna be the pro level drone. A couple of cool additions here. One are some pre-programmed kind of flight modes or flight video styles for more cinematic shots. They're calling this feature Master Shots. Uh, very excited to see uh, what these look like when we actually get folks flying this drone and playing around with it and seeing how cinematic those shots are and how cool they look. And also for those who have invested in the first person view, the FPV goggle set uh, version two uh, that is available most recently in the FPV drone uh, that DJI uh, announced that those goggles will also be compatible with this drone. So super cool uh, that they're making that compatible. Again, gives me hope for something like a smart controller with this drone, um, but a nice addition to the feature set of this drone. So those are the features. Um, here's something that is really cool. I wanna talk about this just really briefly. This drone right here with the battery is approximately 900 grams. Um, that is not incredibly heavy, but if you are backpacking or camping or biking like I do and trying to carry this thing in a backpack or even just walking around during the day with this in your camera bag, um, it's not light. It's not a light thing. And if, like me, you've gone on some epic, epic trips where you've needed multiple batteries, like I did going down the Haleakala volcano in Maui uh, on a mountain bike, it was a three hour trip. I took four batteries with me. That's heavy <laughs> when you take the drone, four batteries and the controller. So 900 grams, pretty heavy. This new drone, only 600 grams. So not as light as the 250 gram mini, but 600 grams for a one inch uh, 10 bit 20 megapixel sensor that'll shoot 5.4K uh, 30 frames per second. That's pretty, pretty fun. Uh, and for folks who are doing a lot of outdoor shooting and doing a lot of outdoor adventuring, that's, that's a nice spec to look at. That's the first spec actually that I looked at after the question about 10 bit video. So we've got the one inch sensor, 20 megapixels, half approximately the resolution of the two, uh, and we've got 5.4K. So higher resolution, probably better low light performance, better quality, better bit depth, but lower resolution. I almost kind of feel like the 2S and the 2 line up similarly to how the Pro or the 2 Zoom and the 2 Pro line up. They're, they're similar, but, but different. They kind of play on each other's strengths whereas the 2S is also coming with some additional features. Is it a direct upgrade to the 2? I don't think so. Uh, it's kind of a side grade based on what you're looking for. Uh, if you want the additional quality in the picture and you're looking for the latest bump in some of those features, the 2S is gonna be an excellent choice for you. If you love the versatility of the 48 megapixel sensor, if you love the resolution and the stills, the two might still be your best bet. If lightweight is something that you're looking for, the 2S and the two are both gonna be great for that, but the mini might be the direction that you're going for. If you were in the market today, right now, to buy a drone, would you buy this one over, say, the Pro 2? Um, and I would say, yeah, th this is pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, you get D-Log, you get the 10-bit video, you get the lightweight, um, of course, you're gonna get 30 plus minutes of record time, 19 meters a second acceleration. Um, you know, all of that stuff is, is kind of, at this point, standard on top of all of the other advanced features that you're gonna get out of this drone. If you already own a 2, would you upgrade to the 2S? Again, I, I kind of said it's not really an upgrade, it, it's more of a side grade, it, it's, a, it's a different product. Um, I don't know, it depends on what you're shooting. It depends on if that super cinematic quality is absolutely necessary for you. If you need that 10 bit video, if you need access to a log profile that you don't get on the two, that might be important. That might be something that you look for. Of course you could use both. Um, you know, it almost feels like you've got like the, the, the R5 and the R6 from Canon right there. They're different prices, but they kind of complement each other in a way. And I think these two drones might do the same. If you already own the Mavic Pro 2 or the Mavic 2 Zoom um, or Mavic 2 Pro, I'm never gonna get that right. 
would you upgrade? Um, I don't believe that this is an upgrade from the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, it's, it's actually sort of a downgrade because of the variable aperture, uh, though the features kind of make that up. And also if you're already invested in something like I am with the smart controller, um, I'm really excited that they've got this new drone out, but to be quite honest, it, it just doesn't uh, appeal to me personally. Um, if I was to buy another drone to complement my existing drone, I'd probably get a mini for my super lightweight backpacking, camping, or uh, mountain biking adventures where I'm looking to go maximum you know, uh, uh, reduction in weight. If you currently have the first generation of the Air, if you have the Spark, if you have the Mavic Pro, the original Mavic Pro, or even I would say the Phantom, uh, any of the Phantoms, even the Phantom 4, uh, this is definitely an upgrade for you. This is definitely a good direction to go. It's lightweight. It's gonna last longer than your current drone. It's gonna go faster than your current drone. It's gonna have better features. Um, and sorry, in addition to all that, it's got improved obstacle avoidance. It's got all the cameras in the world. Um, you know, there's, I mean, it's DJI releasing a new drone. So everything has kind of iterated to the next level uh, and we shouldn't at all be surprised about that. Now last, but definitely not least, the most important question that people normally ask, how much is it gonna cost? Well, it looks like the Fly More combo for this bad boy is gonna be $12.99. That's gonna get you the drone, it's gonna get you the controller, it's gonna get you two batteries uh, and a bag and uh, propellers and all the fun extra stuff. So not a, a huge jump forward, you know, in terms of the technology, um, although we'll wait to see this in folks', folks hands and, and get reviews out and whatnot, um, but definitely good to see the higher quality image sensor continuing to move forward. I'm glad that they didn't deprecate that, that they, they stuck with that. I know we had the half inch sensor in the former uh, on the two, um, but I'm, I'm excited to see that high quality image uh, you know, technology continues to move forward at DJI. And I'm excited to see what they do next with the Mavic line. We've clearly now got the Mavic line and the Air line. They are distinctly different. We've got the two Zoom, the two Pro, the two and the two S. And then we have the Mini and the FPV, um, kind of on their own a little bit. But exciting times, this is super fun. Uh, I, you know what it makes me wanna do? It makes me wanna get out and fly my drone more and get more epic, sh epic shots. Uh, it, it's super fun. I wanna hop on my mountain bike and have this thing follow me, although my mountain bike's in the shop right now, so it'll be a couple weeks before that happens. Uh, anyway, if you like videos like this, uh, where we talk about kind of the technical stuff, some of the new stuff that's coming out, go ahead and hit the like button, uh, and then hit subscribe so that you get new videos from me whenever I make them. Make sure that, that little bell button is clicked. Let me know down in the comments what do you prefer? Do you prefer the higher megapixel stills with the lower bit depth or the higher with the, uh, or lower with the higher? You know what I'm saying, two, two S. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are. Uh, and again, thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and check me out on Instagram, at jblakephoto. I'm so close to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. So I'd really appreciate it if you help push me over uh, and close to 1,000, well, I guess not really close. I think I'm at like 600. Uh, followers on Instagram. I'd love to get over a thousand. That would just make me feel good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's definitely a boost to the ego. So I appreciate you watching. Uh, appreciate your excitement on this product and um, yeah, see you in the next one.